My name is Terry Cosby. I'm the state conservationist for USDA here in Ohio. I'd like to welcome you all here this morning for this event, and it's good to see you all. With that, I'm going to introduce the mayor of Toledo, uh, Mr. Collins, Mr. Michael Collins, who was sworn into office in January 2014. He served in several positions before that, and I'll tell you what, he, he's a great mayor. He's been a great partner in all of this with, with, with USDA and all the partners that are represented here. So I'd like you to welcome Mayor Collins. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, the first week of August may, in some mind, seem like it was history, but for me, it was still yesterday. And I'd like to begin by saying it's uh, we. What we experienced in August is realistically the canary in the coal mine. We have to do something. We can, as a, we can as a city, we can fix our utility plan. We can do what's necessary at Collins Park, but we can't fix Lake Erie. And it's going to take it's going to take the energies and the efforts of the federal government, the Canadian government, the states of Ohio, Indiana, and Michigan in order to be able to address this. So it's my pleasure today, and I understand that Deputy Secretary Krista Harden is not here. However, we do have Senator Stavanoff and Senator Brown, and they were kind enough to invite me to come to Washington and to speak, and I will, I, I guess I could say this. It was somewhat unique when I spoke there because the other four speakers were also there with an agenda. Uh, the state of Iowa was represented, the state of Minnesota was represented, the state of Arkansas was represented, and the Arkansas Univer the University of Arkansas was represented. And they were talking about the influence of agriculture. And how, and, I, and this is indelible in my memory, that addressing the issues of agriculture should be left to the agricultural community. Because we, in, in the, and I, and I think I'm quoting correctly, they would control this by peer pressure. Well, I spent 28 years as a police officer, and I saw what peer pressure had to do with certain segments of our society, and, and it's unfortunate, but peer pressure didn't correct behavior. I'd like to introduce now Deputy Secretary for the United States Department of Agriculture, Krista Harden. Krista Harden was sworn in as the Deputy Secretary of the United States Department of Agriculture of the USDA on August 12, 2013, after a unanimous confirmation by the U.S. Senate, which I think is probably today rather unusual when you see the, uh, the Beltway doing anything unanimously. It must have something to say about her credentials and her credibility. Together, with Secretary Velocic, Deputy Secretary Harden, leads the department working to strengthen the American agricultural economy and to revitalize our nation's rural communities. In her new role, Ms. Harden will build on the Secretary Velocic's leadership and support a diverse and abundant agricultural sector, expand new commodity markets, Strengthen conservation of our natural resources and our nature's national resources, and promote a thriving bio-based economy. She is the highest. She held in the highest priority to ensure that beginning farmers and the growing ranks of agriculture, in men, women, and young people, immigrants, socially disadvantaged, and the producers of crops, including our returning veterans and, and retirees as an offshoot of where they were working in the past, that they will have the access to programs and the support they need in order to have a sustainable agricultural function within the United States. So it is truly my honor to, to speak to you, you in terms of her introduction. And as mayor of the city of Toledo, I see Senator Stavanaugh and Senator Brown here. And I understand Congresswoman Kaptur will be also addressing us today. 
So thank you, thank each of you individually, thank each of you collectively, and thanks to Senator Portman as well for the efforts that he, well, unsuccessful at least at this moment in time. But I believe the fight was on, and I believe the challenge doesn't end just because of one legislative session. I believe this will be accomplished, and we owe it. We have an obligation. We have not been good stewards to our environment, and, and creating blame is not an answer. The answer is a productive thought to the future as to how we can ensure the integrity of our environment and we can protect 20% of the fresh water supply on this planet. Because that is a critical component. It's not whose fault it is. It is our responsibility to step away from blame and create regulatory issues which will address this issue and look for compliance and do it in such a fashion that the injuries of our natural resource are minimized and the ability to have a successful agricultural product and component in industry are maximized. So thank you very much for this opportunity. Um, hello everyone and thank you Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm so um, disappointed that I am not there with you and the senators and the rest of the audience. Um, on the banks of the uh, Maumee Ma River, I had certainly planned to do that. Got up early this morning, was at um, National Airport um, about 6.30 a.m., but I don't think the flight I was on has left uh, National yet. So um, it's just, you know, just the hazards of um, business travel sometimes it works and it usually does, and it's great, but when it doesn't, you, you improvise. So I do appreciate everyone just listening to me today and um, I wanted folks to know how proud we are at USDA about this project. It's um, $17.5 million for the Tri-State Western Lake Erie Basin. Um, and a new program for USDA, thanks to Senator Stabenow and her leadership and her vision um, for how we can do conservation um, across our country. She worked with Senator Brown and others on her side of the aisle and across the aisle. This was a bipartisan effort and I'm sure she'll speak to that in greater detail when she talks to you in a few moments. But it really is a different way of doing business for USDA. It is bringing um, all of us together, the federal government, state government, local um, and community NGOs, all of those farmers, ranchers, producers who are interested um, in such um, in very critical issues like water quality, um, as I know you are in this community. Uh, I think this project, and I'm told I probably I might get in trouble for saying this, but it was probably a, a, the most impressive um, of the applications. It really, to the letter of the intent of the law, with the regional focus, with the three states coming together, obviously to look at conservation and building a really strong partnership across all the lines so that all of the participants are to be commended for working together for combined solutions, finding answers to some of our terrific challenges. Um, it's really about local solutions, bottom-up kind of work that we do in agriculture, measuring results, which is something that I think the taxpayers want us to know, how this investment is going to impact, how is it going to be used, what kind of results are we going to get. It's ambitious, it's broad in scope, and frankly, it's just how government should work. Um, so again, I, I commend uh, Senator Salmon out the vision she and her staff had many years ago to pull this together and fight through a tough battle on the Farm Bill um, to make this happen. I'm sorry I'm not there. This means I, I am I'm owed another trip to Toledo. I hope Mr. Mayor can come to see you on the work on the ground. But I know you're going to have a good morning, a good program, and we're going to get some real results um, with this effort. So thank you all for being there. And again, I apologize that I can't be here in person. being on the phone this morning. I tell you, I was in the hotel this morning when I got the call and uh, I was in a little panic. But we worked it out and, left, and I think you'll see that USDA is a can-do agency. Uh, with that, I'd like to welcome uh, Senator Stebano to the podium. And there's been a lot of things said this morning. I have a bio here, but I'm not gonna read that bio because I think we all know her. After she finishes, then we'll have our Senator from Ohio, Senator Brown who's no stranger, and after that we'll have uh, Congresswoman Marcy Capter on the phone. Great. Thank you very much. Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It is wonderful to be here in Toledo with all of you, particularly my 
my partner, you know, sometimes they say partner in crime, but when you're in politics, you better not say that. Yes, you know. But as Senator Sherrod Brown and I, you know, Sherrod's a senior member of the Agriculture Committee, and uh, Terry, we, we wouldn't have uh, this provision if it hadn't been not only a partnership with all of you, but uh, Senator Brown was uh, with me every step of the way, fighting together, not only to make sure we got the right conservation projects, but that Great Lakes was written on every page of the conservation title, which is what we did. So it's wonderful to be here with, uh, with all of you. Um, our Deputy Secretary, I was on the phone a little bit uh, before coming over. She feels uh, very bad, obviously, that she can't be here. But USDA has been a wonderful partner. And I knew they were going to put this together right because the person who actually wrote this for me, senior staff person Tina May, they stole and put her in charge of implementation. And at first I was very frustrated. And then I thought, no, no, this is good. <laughs> because she wrote it. She knows how we're supposed to implement it. And I knew that uh, she would really put it together well. So uh, we're, we're also glad to have uh, Jamie Clover Adams with us from Michigan Department of Agriculture, which is uh, taking a lead role in this partnership project. And our friend, Congresswoman Marcy Kaptur, who I believe is going to be on the phone again, talk about somebody. She is the person on agriculture and conservation and a whole range of things. We work together on local food systems and water protection, and I know she wanted to be here as well, and so I'm sorry that she can't be here. And I have to say thank you to the mayor. Your mayor, who was a strong voice at our hearing, I wanted to make sure that, and in fact, uh, the, we did two hearings uh, before the end of the year in uh, November and December, and the, our last two hearings, one of them was on water quality, and I wanted to make sure that the mayor was there, speaking not only for Toledo, about southern Michigan, as you know, and the Royal County. I mean, this, this went beyond just the city of Toledo, but the mayor's voice was very, very powerful. So, so whether you're born in Michigan like me and lived in Michigan my whole life or in uh, northern Ohio or frankly anywhere in our Great Lakes states, the Great Lakes are really part of our DNA. And uh, they're part of our way of life. It's drinking water, it's fishing, it's boating, it's swimming, uh, but it's who we are. And so uh, it's so critical that we be uh, protecting our waters. And we went into the the farm bill negotiation, five-year farm bill, I won't go through how tough it was, Senator Brown and I uh, uh, commiserating with our Republican colleagues. We, we, we had to do it twice in the Senate. We actually uh, uh, passed it once in 2012, and Senator Brown was kind enough to come up uh, my way to Dundee. We were at Cabela's talking about conservation and what we had done, right? Many of you were there. Uh, didn't get done in the House, so we went back again, finally got it to passed and signed up to say at my alma mater. I mean, I realize I'm, you know, in Ohio State territory, but as a Michigan <laughs> State person, I was really glad the president signed the Farm Bill um, in Michigan in 2014, so we got it done. I was asked this morning on a call driving over, um, you know, how this is different in terms of conservation. When we went into the negotiations on the Farm Bill, I started by saying, let's not just protect what's there. Let's look at everything. What works, what doesn't work, what duplicates something else. It's not working, let's not do it anymore. Let's not fund it. If it is working, let's do more of it. Uh, if it's duplication, let's figure out how to streamline. And there is not a bigger example of the success of that than our conservation title. Number one, this is the first time in a five-year farm bill that we are spending more money in the conservation title than in the commodities title. This is significant as a tool for agriculture moving forward. And our farmers support that. And then secondly, we reorganized it, and you'll hear a lot about this continually. The Deputy Secretary talked about it, to change the way we do funding and make decisions. So instead of saying, we're from Washington, we're going to tell you how to do this in Western Lake Erie, we say, OK, you tell us. This has got to be a partnership. You know, our farmers and ranchers are, frankly, the, the front-line stewards of the land. They Water and, and land preservation is part of who they are in their daily life and their business. So let's support with tools with our farmers on how we can do the right thing and how to give them the tools to do what they want to do, uh, which is the right thing. How do we work with business? How do we work with cities? 
How do we work with our great universities? All of them in Michigan and Ohio. <laughs> how do we bring together the, what we know on research? Cooperative extension. How do we take what we know and support best management practices? So given all of that, what is important, number one, about this project is it's part of a reorganized view on how we do conservation, driven by the community with support from the federal government through the Farm Bill. The Great Lakes region will receive over $40 million in total, and it's matched dollar for dollar. So it may be matched by actual money, it may be matched by technical assistance, it may be matched by research, but we're talking about uh, Possibly, we don't know for sure, but from everything we can see, it looks like the largest investment to the Great Lakes in terms of water quality that possibly we've ever had. So $80 million uh, coming in. And the biggest project's right here. The biggest project is right here. And that's not by accident. Uh, it's because of all of the work of everybody in the room. It's about the sense of urgency. Uh, we know that there have been issues for a long time. It, they were amplified by what happened. Uh, with the city, uh, but it's because of the need to solve the problems and the commitment and expertise of people in this room. There were 115 projects across the country. Uh, this project, as you know, is giving 17.5 million, doubled with the match, so we're talking about 35 million dollars coming in here. This is added, by the way, to other things we have done through the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative. Uh, we have, at other points, as you know, announced dollars coming in last year, a number of months ago, and so on. But this is a structure through which to do the right thing in terms of how we manage and solve the problem. Benjamin Franklin once said that when the well's dry, we know the worth of water. <laughs> and I, I certainly think we understand uh, what happens when we have this kind of a, a crisis. So we don't want to have happened uh, what happened uh, last August, again, in southeastern Michigan or in Toledo. We know there's not one silver bullet. There's a lot of things that need to come together. We need to support infrastructure, public infrastructure on our water and sewer systems. We need to do a whole range of things. But this is an important part of it. It's a very important long-term part of it. Uh, we want to make sure those algae blooms go away, that folks can drink the water and cook with the water and, and take a bath and brush their teeth and fish and, uh, and enjoy all the Great Lakes. So I just want to say thank you again. This is the largest partnership project, 46 different partners. Now, that may just sound like a number. I mean, that's a lot of, that's a lot of people. That's a lot of groups, conservation groups, environmental groups, business groups, farm groups, you know, all uh, agriculture groups. The city, the universities have come together to put this uh, together to solve this problem. So this is the beginning, it's not the end, but for the roughly 25 million folks who live and work in the Great Lakes, uh, this is an important day, an important time, and we're looking forward to working with all of you to show that this type of partnership works, and that in the end, it is not just about next August in the water or the next office, it's about our kids and our grandkids and what we are leaving to them. So congratulations. Oh. I want to introduce my buddy. I want to introduce my friend, if you don't mind, Terry. Can I introduce, okay. I want to introduce Senator Brown. You know, one of the things about, I love about Senator Brown, we are like kindred spirits because we understand together that you don't have a middle class and you don't have an economy unless you make things and grow things. And that's what we do. That's what we do in Michigan. That's what we do in Ohio. And there's nobody that fights more for making things and growing things and doing it the right way than Senator Brown. As I said, he was integral to this whole process and getting this done. A strong, consistent voice for the right values. And it's great to be in your state. <laughs> Thank you for the terrific work yeah. that you do in Columbus and for the state. I, all of you here from Michigan are really lucky, um, particularly since you care so much about conservation, to have Debbie Stabenow as your, as your senior senator, and even more so to have uh, the chair of the Senate Agriculture Committee um, represent you. And, uh, you know, 
typically, and I, I don't know Senate history all the way back, but typically the chair of this committee, not always, but so often has been a Southerner, uh, that bring to the table a focus on rice and sugar and cotton, and then cotton and sugar and rice, and <laughs> rice and sugar and cotton, and don't really think a lot about the most important, not quite here, but the most important body of fresh water in the world, and don't think enough, don't, don't see the world sort of through um, these incredible Great Lakes. And Debbie's state, I guess, borders four of the five, right? Um, well, actually, no, we, we're, we, got, we touch all five. You touch all five, okay. So we only have one, but we have the best one, but nonetheless, we have one. <laughs> we also have, as you know, the one that's the shallowest, and it's yeah. right not far from here. Uh, that's why, obviously, we have a unique yeah. set of problems uh, that when the mayor came in and so ably <laughs> testified in the Ag Committee just a month or so ago, um, he addressed that, the, the, you know, the, the 30 feet deep and the, 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 what, what came together in such a tragic way less than a year ago. Uh, because of climate change, because of lack of investment, underinvestment in infrastructure, uh, because this society doesn't pay enough attention to conservation because of runoff from farms and businesses and homes and industry and commercial establishments, all of that came together in such a tragic way. I was talking on the way over to a, a gentleman who works for a radio station in Northwest Ohio, not Toledo, but nearby. And he said, I can't believe how, they usually don't editorially comment like this off the air, but he said, I can't believe how quickly all this came together. And you look at the government's role in safe drinking water, and it's been a pretty impressive role. It's impressive because, as, as, as Senator Stabenow said, you've got, in this case, 46 groups coming together. And what, what all of you have done is so very, very, um, very impressive. And, and I, I think people that don't live in, you know, Ohio's a, a complicated state in many ways, but from, from sort of here east to Ashtabula, where my wife grew up, through Sandusky and Cleveland and Lorraine and Cleveland and all the way to Ashtabula, if you live within 50 or 100 miles of the lake, you think about the lake a lot. I'm always intrigued. Somebody lives within five miles of the lake, they can always tell you which way north is without even seeing the lake. I've never really quite understood that, but it seems. But nonetheless, I, I, it really is so impressive how you've all come together and what you've done, what you've gotten the government to do, the EPA and the USDA, what you've gotten your elected officials to do, and this wouldn't have happened. The mayor and the, the chair of the Senate Ag Committee and I would not have happened in the same way if it hadn't been for the engagement and the quick responses of, of so many of you. And I, I still will always remember Paul is here from the, from the, um, the Lake Erie, the, the Lake Captains, um, and, and, and to, to the, the uh, charter boat captains. And, uh, I, I, I will never forget the meeting in my office maybe five years ago, sitting around talking about their love of the Great Lakes and what it means to not just their work lives, but their personal lives, their family. It's not just recreation, it's just the, the, the incredible resource of these great, great lakes. And um, all, all of you think that way and all of you have come together in such an important way. Uh, and you know, while, while, while all of this was caused, again, by climate change, by underinvestment infrastructure, by runoff, by all of that. Um, this announcement today is addressing a central, a major cause of this, and we must stop runoff before it starts. And whether it's um, filter strips, or whether it's, um, uh, whether it's you know, planting crops as cover, what, what cover crops, uh, and all the other conservation approaches that, that we are encouraging agriculture to use under the Farm Bill and in other ways. I, I remember a meeting that Debbie, before she was chair of the committee, but was about to become that, um, back in 2010, she was in uh, when the chair of the committee was leaving the Senate and she was going to be next. Um, I remember we had a meeting in Cleveland, and she, at that point, I said, you know, where are we going with, cons with the conservation titles? And she already had a, a, a sort of a view, of, not sort of, she had a view of this to, to bring these programs together. Um, and you know, not just to eliminate duplication, but most importantly to make them more effective. And that's really what we were able to do in this farm bill. And to put money in it, as, as you may know, we ended, um, bipartisan amendment I worked on with the senator from South Dakota, we ended um, the direct farm subsidies that really made no fiscal or political or policy sense. Um, some of that money ended up in conservation. Some of that money went back to taxpayers. But, but just the vision she's, Debbie has had, uh, to really make sure that 
um, you know, through the Regional Conservation Partnership Program and, and EQIP and other kinds of conservation programs, we are so much moving in the right direction. It's, it's, it's good for our cities, it's good for agriculture, it's good for taxpayers, uh, and it, it means that we're gonna stop the runoff before it starts um, so that uh, these, this, this tragedy that happened in Toledo well less than a year ago um, doesn't happen to any Great Lakes cities and doesn't happen to any communities around this great country. So, um, Debbie, again, thank you. Mayor, thank you, especially all of you as activists that care so much to walk in here and see the enthusiasm and the work that you all do is, is so very, very impressive. Um, I'm introducing the second, I guess, the second voice of God, the first one is the deputy secretary, <laughs> the next voice of God, and we wonder where this voice comes from. This is somewhere in Marcy Captor, and Marcy, um, as much as I said about Senator Stabenow, Marcy Captor has been doing this longer than anybody. Uh, I knew Marcy first. I met her in, during her 1982 campaign, and she has just taken on for 30 plus years uh, the 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 job and the pleasurable job and of such important the public interest job of protecting the, this greatest body of fresh water in the world. Uh, Marcy, up there, wherever you are, <laughs> Marcy. <laughs> Yes. 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 Uh, Senator Brown. Yeah. Thank you so very much uh, for the kind introduction and for your tremendous effort in hosting this press conference in um, our Port Authority building adjacent to the Maumee River, the largest river that flows into the Great Lakes, and the largest loader of nutrients into Lake Erie. Uh, Senator Stabenow, thank you for your uh, incredible leadership, uh, importantly, in passing a farm bill that makes today possible. Thank you, and the Wolverine, for coming to the Buckeye. <laughs> <laughs> and for caring about the border and the waters that we share. Uh, as those in the audience look at you and Senator Brown, uh, they can see progressive leaders who have a vision of how we need to lead our region forward to preserve our most important resource of fresh drinking water. I think Mayor Collins is in the audience this morning, and uh, I know he has had real challenges, and as a region, we must work together to never have last August happen again. This particular award today uh, for the Regional Conservation Partnership Program gives us an opportunity to fix the cause of the nutrient loading and algal blooms in Lake Erie. And we can't get about the task too fast. The conservation focus of this award is vital to us. And so today, I am in Lakewood, Ohio, uh, at a prior scheduled event. I can tell you that this region has a minimum of four water intakes to Lake Erie. Toledo is our most vulnerable large city. It has only one. And the water intake is located high in the water, not deep. We must use these dollars as quickly as possible to stem the nutrient flow that is coming from the largest watershed in the Great Lakes that, that extends west to Fort Wayne, south to Findlay, east to Sandusky Bay, and up into Senator Stabenow of Michigan. And we need a structure which this regional conservation partnership gives us to solve the problem. I want to thank all those gathered there today Terry Cosby, Steve Davis from the NRCS at the Department of Agriculture. I view our efforts in this part of the Great Lakes as important as what that agency did when the Dust Bowl issues were addressed in the western part of our country. Our freshwater bowl is at risk. And this program can really help us reach deep into the watershed. I also want to thank Colonel Jensen 
from the Army Corps of Engineers. The unaddressed flooding problem that fixed us across this watershed must be solved. I stand in unity with all of you to make that happen. Steve Shine from the Michigan Department of Agriculture and Rural Development, thank you for the penmanship and brilliance that took to lead on this application. To Jim Lake with the Tri-State Watershed Alliance for your hard work. To Ed Crawford with ODNR representing the state of Ohio. To all the charter boat captains, the marine industry, labor representatives who are there, we must work together. And our many private and agency partners like the Nature Conservancy and Farm Bureau and the region's soil and water conservation services are all vital to us. So I wanted to uh, thank you all for gathering. Believe me, I am with you on a lockstep, and I'm willing to do whatever is necessary to sample and post results of water quality across our watershed and to help position our region to become, again, uh, the most fresh water quality region in the United States of America. Senator Stabenow, I, I simply can't thank you enough for what you have done to actually author and pass that farm bill after it was log jammed in Congress for half a decade. Uh, I, hope the people, I hope the people in the audience understand how important you are. And Senator Brown, thank you for being, I guess you'd say, riding shotgun beside her uh, in that really Herculean effort. Thank you all for listening. And to Jay Blewell of our own office, thank you for being there in my stead. Working together, we can change the future of our watershed for the better. God bless all of you. Thank you. Steve Shine. Steve Shine is the manager of the conservation program units at the Michigan Department of Agriculture and Rural Development. And I want to thank Steve. Steve worked real close uh, with the other two states to pull this proposal together. And I want to leave this interview to Steve Shine. Good morning. Good morning. As I was preparing my notes this morning, I was telling my daughter what I was going to do today. And I said that I would be on the podium following my hour United States Senator. And she said, Debbie Stabenow? And I said, yeah. And then she said, are you nervous? And I said, well, I wasn't until you started to say that. <laughs> so it's really great to be here. And I was thinking this morning as I was putting my notes together, what is it that brings people together? And I thought to myself, well, there's always food. That's a good thing. And then there's money. But then ultimately there's a cause. So in the beginning, the table was set by NRCS and the Army Corps of Engineers. The financial resources were laid out through an earmark by Congresswoman Marcy Kaptur, which brought us all together for the partnership. We were all invited to the table to address the health of Lake Erie. And over the past decade, we have learned a tremendous amount about the ills of Lake Erie. The universities have led, have led the way, shifting what we have traditionally understood about phosphorus to a discussion about dissolved reactive phosphorus. And the passage of the 2014 Farm Bill, led by our U.S. Senator, Debbie Sabinow, O. Green, yes. <laughs> creates a new opportunity for all of us. The Regional Conservation Partnership Program was developed in part as the result of the Senate staff attending one of our Western Lake Erie Basin partnership meetings. Three states working together, pooling their resources to address the issues of Lake Erie. It has been a great experience to work with so many dedicated professional conservation-minded people in the development of our proposal. And I'd like especially to recognize Elaine Brown as the primary, <clears throat> as the primary author for her leadership and creativity. of the states. I wasn't going to say cats and hurt in the cats, but I thought better of it. 
and all of our partners' commitment to the cause, especially represented by ODNR Mike Bailey and Jennifer Thumb, the Indiana Department of Agriculture. There you are. Um, we're, you know, all three of us were the signatories and the leads for our states and then. So beyond that, I'd like to recognize all of our partners and their commitment to the cause because we had a tremendous amount of effort and time put to it. As you suggested, there's many, many partners involved in this effort and it's going to take many of them and all of them to pull this off in the end. And I'd also like to recognize our conservation districts as the unsung heroes who will get the job done. They, in the end, are the boots on the ground that we will put, we will put to the task. So hats off to them. So I'm looking forward to getting the agreement in place and putting conservation on the land. I'd like to say that voluntary conservation does indeed work, and it works especially well when it's tied to regulatory certainty like we do in Michigan, and I think we'll use that model very successfully. So thank you once again for allowing us to be here. I, my director, Jamie Clover Adams, was not able to be here today, so you got me. I appreciate this opportunity, and uh, she uh, sends her congratulations down to us all. So thank you very much. Of State Conservation for Michigan, Gary Lee. Uh, Gary. Also, the State Conservation from Indiana, uh, Jane Harshney, who's not with us today. Also, the co chair of the Western Lake Air Basin Partnership, Lieutenant Colonel Jensen, Carl Jensen. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your leadership. Uh, he's my partner in crime. <laughs> <laughs> so, with that, uh, we're going to wrap up. Uh, there will be interviews in time. Uh, Diane Johnson, <coughs> where are you in the Diane is here. Diane is coordinating the interviews that you'd like to talk to <coughs> these folks. I think Krista Harden will be available by phone if anyone would like to interview her. And we'll, be, we'll all be here if you'd like to have an opportunity. So thank you all for being here. Mayor College, thank you for having us in your great city. Uh, we will join with that. Thank you all for being here. <laughs>